Seed Lending Library, located in the Richmond Public Library in Richmond, California. This video is a orientation to how to check out seeds from the Seed Lending Library. After watching this video, you can come down anytime that the Richmond Public Library is open and borrow seeds. And what does it mean to borrow seeds? Well, it means that you can come down and borrow seeds, plant them. And how do you return seeds? Well, that's going to be the subject for another video. But the basic idea is that you'll learn how to save seeds, and we'll have some videos on that to support you on how to return some of those seeds at the end of the harvest. So let's get started. First off, how's the library organized? Well, we have three categories of seeds, and they're in three separate cabinets. The first cabinet is an ornamentals cabinet, which includes non-edible um, flowers, California natives, as well as other types of ornamentals such as gourds. The other cabinet we have is called the herbs cabinet, and it contains culinary and medicinal herbs. And the third cabinet, which is kind of our centerpiece, is our edibles cabinet. And that includes vegetables, other types of miscellaneous edibles, including edible flowers. So you might find the large edible sunflowers in that one. Now, the first thing we want you to notice when you're looking at any of the cabinets is these signs that say, super easy, easy or difficult. That refers to the seed saving level. You may want to start with seeds that are in drawers marked easy. You can check out difficult seeds, but this may not be the season that you decide to return those seeds. Now, what do we mean exactly by super easy, easy and difficult? Well, what that means is that when you plant that seed and you save those seeds, for super easy and easy seeds, you don't have to do a lot in order to return seeds that are exactly like the ones that you planted. Now, a squash, for example, is a pretty difficult seed to save. And that's because if you have a squash, maybe I have a butternut squash, and someone down the road has a spaghetti squash, those two, a bee from one plant might come and pollinate yours. So what are you gonna what the seeds might look fine, the squash might look fine, but if you return those seeds, it may not be what you think they are. So if you're new to seed saving, look at the drawers with the labels Super Easy and Easy. These are seeds that are great for beginners seed savers. We also have some videos to support you in learning a little bit more about seed saving. And there's also a poster in the library that says New to Seed Saving and has a bunch of different types of plants that are easy for beginner seed savers to start with. So let's talk about how some of the different cabinets are organized. The ornamentals cabinet is organized by common um, categories such as flowers, California natives, and ornamentals. And within that, you'll see in the flowers drawer particular types of common species like cosmos and daisies. And then after that, you'll see cosmos organized alphabetically by different varieties. Within the herb cabinet, it's organized alphabetically. So if you open the AB drawer of the herbs cabinet, what you'll see is you'll see a bunch of different varieties of basil organized alphabetically by common varieties, such as cinnamon basil and purple basil. Now let's take a look at the edibles cabinet. The edibles cabinet is organized by the Planting Times Guide. It's a color wheel that was created by our sister seed lending library, Basil, located in the Ecology Center in Berkeley. Now the reason we chose to use this color wheel that's organized by families is because members of the same family often are saved the same way. So things that are all in the bean and pea family would be saved pretty similarly. Now, today I was interested in borrowing some beans. So I looked at the drawer, that's the pea family, that also includes beans. And within that, we have several different subcategories of beans, broad beans, which are fava beans, bush beans, and also pole beans. So I was looking for a bush bean today. So I looked through, once again, it's organized alphabetically by common names. So there's broad beans, bush beans, and then pole beans. And then within the bush beans, they're alphab alphabetized by common varieties. So I found a bunch of, pe of beans that I was interested in, in particular the Soleil uh, French filet beans. So in order to borrow the beans, one thing that's helpful is we have these seed markers. So you can take a seed marker out. It's located on top of the ornamentals cabinet. Stick it where you're, you found your beans or whatever else you're looking for so you know where to replace them when you're finished. So I took out the seeds and then I found, um, I decided to look at the envelope to see um, just a little bit more to see if this is a type of plant that I'm actually really interested in. Looks good. So then I'm going to go to the 
edibles cabinet and inside the glass case there are pre-printed envelopes for you to borrow seeds in. So I took out an envelope and a pencil and I looked at the seed packet and on the front it gives me some information that's important to record such as the type of plant, it's a bush bean, I mean it's a bush bean and the scientific name and that's actually located on the back of this envelope. Many large seed companies do not include the scientific name on their seed packet. The scientific name is the botanical name for that particular species. It's always written in italics. The first letter, which is the genus, is capitalized. If you need to find the scientific name, you can find it in our blue resource binder located on the top of the cabinet, the ornamentals cabinet. So I fill in as much information as I can on the envelope. And the reason why this is is because when we go to return it, we want to have as much information to share with the person that we're sharing those seeds with. And it's also just good to start getting into to taking good records of our garden. Now, we recommend that for every plant you intend to grow out, take two to three seeds. So if I was going to plant four bean plants, then I would want to take anything anywhere from eight to 12 seeds for this season. Now let's just take a minute to look at the resource binder. Now the resource binder has a bunch of different things in there. It can help you to find a scientific name. Um, and it can also has translations into Spanish and um, you might be looking at a particular packet of seeds and go like, hmm, I'm not sure if these seeds are very viable. And so we have a form in there that just kind of tells you about how long it takes, how long plants are still good for and how far away they should be from other plants of a similar species so that they maintain varietal purity. So that's just some, some of the resources located in the resource binder. Now that you've put the seeds in an envelope, you're almost ready to take them home. But there's just one last step, and that is to check them out, just like you would a library book. We have a computer database, so first thing you'll have to do is create an account, and there will be a separate video on how to do that and how to use the computer. It's fairly self-explanatory, but just in case you need a little extra support. If for some reason the computer isn't working, we do have a paper backup. It's located in the edibles cabinet in an orange binder that says membership forms and all of the forms are organized alphabetically by last name. And after you've done all this, once again, in a little while at the end of the season, you'll be having to return some seeds to the library. And we encourage you to check out books from the library or to read some of our brochures on how to save seeds as well as just how the library is organized. And also feel free to visit us at richmondgrows.org. We're a project of the richmondrivets.org, which is a organization that helps people live locally in Richmond, California, and of course the Richmond Public Library, who's been very generous in donating their space for us. We're a fiscally sponsored project of Urban Tilth, cultivating agriculture in West Contra Costa County to help our community build a more sustainable, healthy, and just food system with the capacity to produce 5% of our own food supply. If you live outside of the greater Richmond area and are interested in having your own seed lending library, all of our materials are on our website for you to download, including our brochures, orientation material, as well as our organizational material and the process in which we created our library. Feel free to share this information widely.